here to celebrate the extraordinary Terry Lee. Now it's that time again, ladies and gentlemen. We are approaching another federal election. Canadians are going to have to reflect on the kind of communities we have, the kind of country we have, the kind of future we want to build together. And this is an important time to talk to our neighbors, to lean on each other, to talk about how we're going to be building that better country, how we're going to continue on the work of generations ahead of us who worked so hard to create strong communities, and how we're going to adapt and adjust to the challenges that were coming. And the reality is, in 2015, we put forward a very different vision than the Conservative government had for this country. We said the way to grow the economy, the way to help people is not to give tax benefits and advantages to the wealthiest in the hopes that it trickles down. Because for 10 years of that under Stephen Harper, it didn't work to grow our economy. He had the lowest growth rate of any prime minister since R.B. Bennett in the depths of the Great Depression. So we knew we needed to take a different approach. And we did exactly that. We committed to invest in Canadians, to invest in the middle class and those working hard to join it. And you know what? Over the past four years, that has worked for Canadians. <laughs> We invested more money in families, we gave more support to seniors, we invested in education, we invested in skills training, we made sure that people had confidence to be able to face the future. And what did Canadians do? Not only did we see 825,000 people lifted out of poverty in the first years of our government, 300,000 of them kids, but Canadians turned around and invested in their own futures and created over a million jobs over the past four years. Our economy is booming, and it happens because we're also investing in our communities, in uh, infrastructure, in housing, in partnership and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples to make sure that we're moving forward in the right way. We're moving forward in ways that make sure that everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. And we couldn't have done it right across the country without an incredible team of 17 BC Liberal MPs from the Liberal Party of Canada, including some of our great members and ministers right here. But politics, for all the cynicism and the challenges that we see in politics these days, it takes good people to keep stepping up. It takes good people to come forward and say, I want to serve my community. I want to be my community's voice in Ottawa. I want to be part of building a better future for us all. We've got a plan that has worked for four years, but we need to keep at it. And in order to do that, we need to keep adding amazing, strong voices from right across the country. And that's what brings us to Terry tonight. <laughs> you know Terry. We know Terry, he's an incredibly strong worker, a uh, uh, strong voice for the community. He's been a minister of health, minister of environment, but he has always been an extraordinarily strong voice uh, for, for, uh, for uh, Kamloops, for Thompson River Caribou, uh, and he is going to be an amazing member of the next Liberal government uh, as an MP for Thompson River Caribou. Thank you, Terry. Everyone, Terry. Justin, thank you so much for coming to our great part of the country. And thank you to your cabinet, cabinet colleagues who are here today uh, recognizing the tremendous work of organizations, First Nations, volunteers that have really helped people in our province deal with the terrible situation of wildfires over the past number of years. And if anyone knows the impact of climate change, it is people right here in Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou. It is like a war zone here, Prime Minister, in the summer. People leave so they can breathe clean air. People are worried. They, they suffer physically, they suffer mentally, because climate change has impacted the health of our forests. Hotter summers have made it easier for fires to grow and to threaten communities. And that's what brought me off the sidelines, was your and your government's commitment to taking action on climate change. 
can no longer, we can't sit on the sidelines as a country anymore. And people say, well, is it really a ballot question? Yes, it is a ballot question. We know it's a ballot question. We see the evidence every summer. I've been working and living in, in central Canada where for the past two out of three years, 100 year floods have taken people out of their homes for months. Tornadoes have devastated entire neighborhoods. Climate change is a threat to our communities and our families. And we in this room together with all Canadians and with the Liberal Party must do something to improve that situation for our children. Let's do that together. And climate change isn't the only threat to our communities. We know that the overdose crisis that we are facing is the worst public health situation we have seen in over 100 years in this country. Every day, still today, three British Columbians lose their lives because of the toxic drug supply. And while the latest numbers show a, an improving situation here in British Columbia, it's actually getting worse in Ontario. In a, in a province where they just, a conservative government just cut public health funding, closing down overdose prevention sites to keep, keep people alive. When I was health minister working with the Liberal government in Ottawa, they opened doors to allow us to provide the services that keep people alive in this province, to provide the necessary care so they can get on the journey to recovery. There is no plan from the Conservative government for addressing climate change, for addressing an overdose crisis that is impacting families across this country. Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party of Canada have a plan not just to fight climate change, not just to fight the overdose crisis, but to build the economy, because those things actually can go hand in hand. We can build the economy, we can improve our environment. We know here that the Trans Mountain Pipeline is an important project for the people of the interior of BC. <laughs> Prime Minister, that pipeline is part of a comprehensive climate action plan that includes a limit on oil sands emissions, that includes a national price on carbon. As we transition away from a, a, towards a low carbon economy in a way that doesn't strand the natural advantages that we have and the wealth that it brings to fund healthcare, to fund education. We can do those things together. The Conservative government, the Conservative party who hopes to be government has no plan to do that. We have a plan to do that. And so I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm grateful to the ministers that have come here today. I'm grateful for the great candidates like Cindy uh, and uh, like Connie and Steve Fuhrer, our MP in Kelowna, because as I found in Central Canada, they don't always understand British Columbia. And <laughs> with deference to my colleagues from the coast, if they do, it's about Vancouver. But well, we are going to put a strong interior team together that will recognize and support.